Hi, and I'm now joined by Dave Barbarossa with his new book, Mud Sharks. Hi, Dave. How are you? All right, Simone. Very so well. you're, you're better known for being the drummer in um, Adam and the Ants and also Bow Wow Wow in the uh, late 70s and early, early 80s. 80s. Yeah. Correct. Um, and this book is based a lot on that that time in your life, but yep. also your childhood as well. It is, yeah. Could you explain a little bit more about it? Well, um, I've just written a, a kind of a novel about my story, and um, I've written of what I've known, which is, uh, you know, obviously my childhood and school days, and my life in the, in the punk rock bands of that era. And uh, I've just tried to weave a story into sort of the characters and the times I lived in. I was very captivated by the character Harry, who's um, loosely based on you, or yeah. quite a lot based on you. About three people removed. <laughs> yeah, because um, he grew up, obviously, he was a... Uh, he's Mauritian, mm -hmm. half Mauritian, half, half English. Correct, So, yeah. obviously, in the 70s, that was quite hard, anyway, because there was a lot of... Um, there was a lot more racism in the 70s, there wasn't there? There was. It was so a less enlightened to, time, yeah. He had to struggle with that. And then yeah. also he had quite a troubled background at home. He had a very difficult relationship with his father and yep. mother as well. Yeah. And I really felt for this character. And it mm. actually totally made me understand why he was so driven in his um, future career as a drummer. Yeah. Um, how, how much of that was you in that character, Harry? Well, there's a, there's a great deal of it. But I actually come from a big family of six brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't go straight into the drums. I did lots of different bits and pieces, uh, you know, working as a messenger boy and uh, labouring and doing all sorts before I found the, the drum. So it's, it's not slavishly my story, but you know. And you really were so proud of uh, Harry mm -hmm. when he actually uh, saved up to get his drum kit. Yeah. Because he was living on his own at that point because his yep. parents had sort of pushed him out of the house mm -hmm. and quite, in, in a really sad way, were quite happy to have him out. They didn't sort of beg for him to come back and... No, they were better off without him. He was a, a yeah. neg negative influence on them and everything around him. And he had a, uh, a troubled background, mm -hmm. you know, obviously with his uh, father being quite cruel to him, mm -hmm. uh, beating him and emotionally abusing him, and then a mother that was quite weak and always had a, a guard up because she was just so beaten down by having this kind of bully of a husband. Yeah, I mean, and she, she and the boy were intimidated by a big impressive, powerful figure, as many people are by their fathers. I think that's actually quite a relatable thing, because I think mm. a lot of people feel like they're the only ones that had, like, cruel parents. <laughs> and the fact that, actually, they didn't even care when he, when he was pushed out of the house, they didn't even ask for him to come back. And he was kind of like this young boy living on his own, uh, working odd jobs, mm -hmm. and then finally saves up to get this drum kit, mm -hmm. which becomes, like, his new family. His best friend, His yeah. best friend. Someone to talk to. And with that drum kit, he found other f members of the family, the, the band that he joins mm -hmm. with uh, his new friend, friend uh, Christian, who was on, played the guitar. Yeah, that's right. And uh, their friendship was very profound as well throughout the book. You see them through their journeys in their band and you realise that Harry and Christian are such different personalities because of their backgrounds. Yeah, but they make music together, which is yeah. the great thing. You know, different people, different backgrounds, making something that's whole and interesting. Uh, what were you trying to show with those two characters and the contrasting personalities? You know how Christian um, reacted differently to the whole uh, music industry and becoming famous compared to Harry? Hmm. What were you trying I to think, show with that? I think Harry's just eternally grateful and surprised at his luck. Yeah. Whereas Christian always felt he was entitled to the life. And maybe that entitlement made him abuse himself and his uh, job. And in the end, did for him. It's so sad that bit. Is it? <laughs> it was. I actually cried in that bit. I was oh, like, blimey. no, don't don't do that. He like he didn't enjoy it the way he should have because no, no. you know they finally reached that point of fame mm -hmm. where they were in America mm -hmm. and they weren't enjoying it the way they should have, the way you should really if you've made it that big. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a, a sad thing. Yeah. And there's a moment. I mean, obviously the name of the book's Mud Sharks, and there was a profound moment where. They were fishing for mud sharks, and that, that's like a turning point. That's why you've called it. Yeah, this. I think at that point, Harry realises that Christian will never be satisfied being a great star in a great band, that he'll always want something else and something more, and that is what drives him down eventually. Oh, that's true, actually. Mm. And uh, um, I think that Bow Wow I want to talk about after the, oh, after the break. Will you join me after the break? I will. 
We'll be back after the break with more Loaded Lip. Still joined by Dave Barbarossa with his book Mud Sharks, and we were just talking about uh, the music industry, and we were just getting on to talking about the band Bow Wow Wow, which was after Adam and the Ants. Yep. A less, uh, I think, when you were with Adam and the Ants, was it a little bit more anti-establishment? It was a, a darker, a darker, moodier uh, band, and run by Adam. All yes. the songs. He was a, was he a little? Was he a little scary? A little imposing? He was. He was. Because I, I mean, in the book, obviously, because mm. it's related with your life, it seems like Lucas, the main mm. character, is a little bit imposing. He's a little bit a, like that. Yeah. 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 Like any moment, you could lose your job. Any moment, <laughs> you could lose your job, and invariably did. And yeah. You got it back again. Yeah. yeah. Now he was a he was a great leader and a great example mm -hmm. for a, a bloke like me in the band when I started out. Because I had no self-discipline and he was a very much a disciplinarian, so. And that's something you and Harry, the character, are probably looking for as well, once yeah. again. You know, this sort of role model that you mm -hmm. can look up to a little bit, because mm -hmm. he didn't have that in his own life. Correct, yeah. Um, and what was the differences between Adam and the Ants and Bow Wow Wow? Obviously, I could hear your the tribal beat, which was instrumental to a lot of people's um, music careers at that time. Like, you hear that that Burundi African yeah, sure. beat that you well, created. Well, there's no such thing as that, and I didn't really create it. It, it just came out of um, what I listened to as a kid, my stuff my dad played, like African, Latin music, you know, Mauritian Sega music, plus listening to the chart stuff, T-Rex, you know. David Bowie and all the rest of it, and the reggae in the area I grew up in. So that those beats, those rhythms came out of that background. So after travelling the world and mm -hmm. then coming back, obviously to do like normal jobs, normal as we yeah. put it. How did how did that actually feel? Well, it, it was a little depressing because one minute you were somebody, and the next minute you were a cab driver or knocking a wall down and filling a skip up. But um, it was uh, humbling and grounding and. Uh, Gave you time to reflect and be a little bit philosophical about life, you know, the ups and downs, and uh, motivated you to get back into uh, sort of the professional game. I think you've got a very healthy attitude towards things. I think it's probably because of your upbringing, as well as Harry's. Mm. It's kind of the same because, um, you know, because of your upbringing, you've had to be strong and take care of yourself. Yeah. But you know that um, other characters that you've met in the industry, you yeah. must find that they're not as strong or as sturdy. So they're not able to kind of deal with the fame and all that type of thing. I mean, what what is it about certain people that make them more vulnerable? And, you know, for instance, uh, Christian ends up getting quite heavily into heroin and things like that. Like, no, what is it about them that makes them go down well, that road? I think, you know, without sounding, uh, being too bland about it, I mean, everybody is different yeah. and have things affect people differently. And um, some people, find uh, the fame and fortune and the crazy, you know, life. They, they think it's reality, yeah. when in fact it isn't. What's real is when you leave work and you go home. But oh. some people want that 24-hour thing and, and that's the way they are. If you hadn't played drums, what would you, what would you have played? What do you think you would have done? Was, oh, was drums always the thing you wanted to do? I, yeah, I... You just I, had an affinity, you just felt drawn yeah, to Yeah, I mean, I, from a young age I've played the drums, so I don't really... I never really had another career path, I mean, you know... You must have seriously big biceps. Oh, God, I wonder what you're going to say then. <laughs> uh, I don't have... Not seriously big, they're, they're adequate. They muscly. All that drumming, because you must drum for, like, hours and hours and... I have drummed for hours and hours. <laughs> and you get the blisters on your hand, are they just, like, not there anymore? They're not there anymore. You just get used to yeah. it. It's all about economy of movement. So what would you say to somebody who's trying to get into music these days? Like, what, you know, well, trying I mean, to get... Well, it's a wonderful thing to get in. It's a beautiful, wonderful journey, and uh, enjoy the music, not the things around it. Actually, what do you think of um, things like the X Factor? You know, it's kind of manufactured sort of bands and music yeah, now. Yeah, not really, not really a great watcher of programmes like that, unfortunately. I, I, I really me. wouldn't know. 
Little Mix, you who, didn't find out about that. Who no. was factoring what X <laughs> and what X was factoring what X. Because um, what I like about, you know, the bands of the past especially mm -hmm. is, you know, you have to do your hard graft. Yeah, uh, sure. That's something you learn about in the book as well, you know, the amount of, you know, hard work you have to actually do, which sometimes people don't seem to appreciate these days. They just think... Perhaps Good. there isn't the circuits around anymore that people... Do you think that's control. the difference? I think so, yeah. I think a lot of things are, uh, you know, on, on, in the media rather than live. So it's a, different, it's a different world, which is good. And how does it feel writing books now, like after all that drumming? <laughs> you have great. to use a different muscle. <laughs> well, really, it comes from the same place. Yeah. You know, it's just a different medium. You know, if like drumsticks or it's the, the laptop to write on comes from the same place. Uh, and what do you have coming up next? Are you, are you in a band now as well? Or? I am playing around with uh, various people. I play with a guy called Will Crudson, do live shows around London. I'm doing a sort of solo big show off drum thing coming up and uh, I'm writing another book as well, yeah. Ooh, any hints on what that's about? Well, it's not about a bloke in a band. <laughs> <laughs> something a bit different. It's something a bit, a bit different, a little bit more of a, a fantasy world. Uh, a bit more social comment in it and um, some interesting characters. And, <laughs> and um, where can we find your work? Have you got a website or something yeah, you can go to? Yeah, uh, Okay, And great. you can order the book on there from various shops. Thanks so much for coming in, Dave. And that is uh, Mud Sharks by Dave Barbarosa. <laughs>